Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to talk about Azure Data Factory interview questions and this video is part 4 in our play series of Azure Data Factory interview questions. So let's move ahead with the first question that we have for today. So this is a very common interview question because this is a scenario that uh, you know most of the organizations will have, right? How do you handle incremental data in Data Factory? So th through this question, interviewer actually tries to see if you have used incremental data in Data Factory or do you have any idea or do you have something new or uh, you know do you know this particular concept or not you know how you can handle incremental data in data factory now for this question uh, you need to understand that there are multiple answers to it and each of the answer uh, actually relates to a particular use case so we will be discussing few of them in this video so that uh, you know uh, during interview you are very much comfortable on what you are saying and for what scenario you are saying that so let's say you want to load the data from a database Right, you want to load delta data. When I say delta data, that is the changed data. That is what you want to load, right, from the database. Now, in this case, what happens is in the source table, from where you are picking up the data, you can have a watermark value, right? You can have a watermark column. So, uh, when I say watermark column, so let's say you have a date column, right? Uh, I have a table A today where, uh, you know, you are just loading the data, you are adding the data to that particular table, but when the rows are coming into that particular table, you have a watermark value or you have a date column over there, which is telling you that these rows are actually uh, the rows which are inserted today, right? And then, uh, you know, let's say tomorrow again data comes in that particular table, then what happens is, the you know you have another set of rows but with uh, tomorrow's date for say so what is actually helping you to understand what data is an incremental data is the date column is the watermark value now in this case what you do is you take that watermark uh, value you take the highest watermark value let's say it's about date so if i'm giving you an example of date now let's say you take that particular date the highest date from that table you load it and then you store that date value in another table which you ref which you can refer again so now again tomorrow if the load is coming if again tomorrow the number of rows are coming into that particular table now you will have a different value for the date you will have a different value for your watermark right so now you can compare the watermark value which you read last time to the other watermark value which came this time and you can only uh, load the incremental data so this is one way of handling incremental data in data factory so how you are going to use it and they might ask you so this is the conceptual thing right what i've explained you this is concept but now how what activities you are going to use how you are going to do it that also is a question that uh, you know interviewer might ask you when you explain this right so for that again uh, you can see over here i have the second diagram over here where you are passing the list of tables to the pipeline as parameters we are also going to talk about parameters you can pass the values as parameters. So let's say you want to uh, load uh, 10 different tables with incremental data. So you pass the list of those 10, in 10 uh, tables that you want to load. So you say to the data factory that here are my 10 tables and I want to load it one by one, right? So then you can have a for each loop, for each loop or a for each activity, what this for each activity will do. That for each table, it is going it, it will go and try to do a lookup activity inside a for each activity. It will go ahead, go a lookup, go a lookup to the table where you are storing the watermark, right? Where you are storing the last watermark which you have read from. And then you are going to the source table and checking what is the watermark which is present in the source table currently. So the difference, right? So you will actually go ahead and load the data through copy activity uh, you, between these two particular watermark values or between these two particular dates, right? So this is how actually uh, you can load the data, load the incremental data. And do remember that in the end, once you have loaded the data, you have the lookup table, right, from which you are fetching the last uh, watermark value which you have used right that is your own table now that table you have to update also so you can create a stored procedure activity for it you can update that table with the watermark value which you have just read so that is the third part of it right 
So this is pretty much the first scenario where you assume that you will be having a watermark value. So all in all the cases, watermark value is not there. Uh, in fact, I'll discuss on that also. But yes, you have the first answer over here that if you have a watermark column, you can use that watermark column. So let's say you have a date column. You can use the date column again to reiterate how you will use it. You can pass on the you know the number the, the list of tables. Now each of these list of tables can go through for each activity. Now through for each activity inside for each activity for each table it is going to look up the value from the last iteration then it is going to look up the value of watermark uh, column from the current uh, source table and then it is going to check the delta what are the records that have changed and it is going to merge and copy those uh, um, uh, co copy those rows basically right to whatever destination you want to copy and then you can have a stored procedure activity to update the value of watermark column in your reference table so this is pretty much one scenario and it is very much uh, you know a simple one usually you do not have this case in very few cases you will have you will see this particular scenario being used but still it is very good to know it and explain it to the interviewer as well now the second scenario is let's say you are again trying to load the data from SQL DB and in that case you can use the default cha change tracking technology that comes up with the database right now again with your SQL DB you have something called as change tracking technology where you have system changed versions so you can uh, again in the same way right the, the it's pretty much the same thing that you are trying to do with the watermark column but here instead of the watermark column you are going and using change tracking tracking technology where you are uh, if you see over here you are doing uh, you know comparison between system change version and system change version between the last and the new one right so you you are storing the the system change version which you have already created your pipeline for for which you have already loaded the data system change version you go ahead and store it in a table and when the next time a load comes you compare what you have stored with the current system change version you compare it and then you go ahead and load that table so it is pretty much the same thing but using the change tracking technology that comes with the data uh, base now the third thing is using last modified date now uh, this is a little different scenario it does not have any watermark column right now this last modified date now in this case you do not have any uh, you know watermark column or anything of that sort so let's say your your files are getting copied in data lake gen 2 right in that case the uh, they will have a modified date right they will have the date of upload now using that later date of upload you can actually scan only those files uh, for which the date of upload has been the latest right just very simple now this can be done through your copy activity itself or even what you see on the screen right now the screenshot if you see if you go through this copy data tool uh, in that case you can see that the file loading behavior incremental load right last modified date so based on the last modified date it will actually go ahead and pick up all the files and then it will it, you can just copy it wherever you want to right so this is one scenario as well you can do it through copy data tool or in fact i can also show you it right away even in the copy data activity if you see right there is an option over here like once you drag and drop the copy data activity you can actually see that you have the source right filter by last modified so here you can actually specify add dynamic content so add, whenever uh, you click on add dynamic content you can actually specify whatever logic you want to specify so you can write anything like utc now you know uh, the current time and utc now minus one so take all the files from uh, you know current time like let's say you want to take all the files from uh, the last day so utc now and utc now minus one so that will have 24 hours of uh, window now in that window also you can go ahead and copy the latest files so when i say latest files if you go to the blob storage in fact if i let's say if i go to any a particular blob storage and i can actually show you if i have the files over here and guys you can see it over here you have these dates over here right so based on these dates actually it can go ahead and pick up the latest files that are available in your blob storage so this is also one of the use case that might be asked to you in the interview questions but uh, i would actually suggest you that you should know this these things these things in detail you should know what are the different ways in which we can do that so based on your use case you can implement that right now the th uh, fourth thing is 
like you can load the new file based on the uh, you know time partition folder or file name when i say that so your folder or even your file might be coming with the dates right so let's say your file uh, let's say you have file test uh, test year 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 month date and the file let's say like it has the timestamp in its name right in that case also it is very easy to handle incremental data because in your blob storage today file came with the date of let's say 20 march now again uh, you know tomorrow it comes with 21 march so you already know which file to pick up on right so you can filter it using the file name uh, option so if you see in this particular screenshot when you use the copy tool in that case you can actually specify file loading behavior as time partition so it will ask you for all the details like how is your file name partition it has year it has month it has date it has the hour format and then it will actually uh, you know you can you have to select this binary copy option and then it, it does all your work so automatically it will go ahead and pick up the latest file from your blob storage so that is also one of a very good option so uh, in fact uh, in this there is a drawback as well that interviewer might go in deep if you are explaining it really well in that case interviewer will definitely go deep and he will try to you know get more out of you more info out of you what you know and what you don't know and he might also ask you then uh, what is the drawback of this there is a drawback because let's say you have thousand files uh, in your blob storage right you're not deleting it in your area that's going to a blob storage whatever it is you have a lot of files and you don't want to delete those files now in that case whenever you choose this particular option what will happen is it will scan through all the files right it will scan through all the files and then it will try to pick up the latest file now the scanning process is definitely very high very high on time right so this is one of the drawback of it uh, so these are like the common scenarios which are actually asked in the uh, interview questions but at the same time remember that that these are just uh, you know few scenarios now uh, if you ask me that uh, like do we really use them uh, in fact we don't use in fact we don't really use these all the time because most of the time uh, from your source you will not get a file which has time partitioned uh, you know which is time partitioned or which has a timestamp on the file name you usually do not get it you usually uh, you know uh, will not get a scenario where you have to find the files based on the last modified date you will you might not get it similarly you might not have a watermark column as well so in that case usually what the, what uh, companies do is they have uh, they, they can use a mechanism of change data capture tool so there are a lot of tools and technologies um, let's say you have click replicate is uh, one of the, uh, those tools which actually capture only your uh, you know incremental data from source and it will load it into your ADLS gen 2 so that is also a very good option if you want to uh, you know check out you, you go ahead type click replicate get to know a little bit about it you'll understand that it is also a change data capture tool so uh, once the you know your change data is captured in the ADLS gen 2 or wherever you want to then you can go ahead and do any kind of transformations on that so that is also one method where uh, you know you use these incremental uh, data tools and uh, and this is how you can also use data factory and whenever interviewer ask you these things you can explain any of these scenario or you can in, in fact explain all of these scenario and say that i have used these these and these scenarios as well right so this is a uh, pretty much a very commonly asked interview question and do let me know in the comment section if you want to if you want me to make a video on any other topic and in fact if you have been asked any interview questions and you want me to you know capture it in the video do let me know in the comment section and thank you so much for being till here and uh, do remember to like subscribe and share my channel thank you so much